Sona Matani. I'm your facilitator for this session. Um, and I've had the privilege of working in Bristol over the last three years now, um, working with uh, a group of black led organizations. Um, and that work has been um, successful enough for us to want to take that message of capability and confidence and funding um, and strength to the Southwest um, as a region now. So um, uh, Black Southwest Network has been um, really pivotal in, in um, repositioning how those organizations are perceived and recognized now by funding. Uh, and part of that is um, um, some of the, you know, we used to call it capacity building work, but we are, as time goes on, recognizing there's a lot of capacity within the community, but it hasn't had the chance to get expressed, hasn't been resourced, hasn't been developed. And part of that process is people uh, realizing how they're presenting their work. And, um, uh, and so this, this process of theory of change is, um, part of helping people recognize some of the concepts that they might need to look at when you're communicating what you're doing as enterprises, as um, social action organizations to um, get that across in a more clear, organized way. Um, and so the theory of change is um, a kind of phrase that's become so standard but it, it kind of uh, underneath it is quite a lot going on and I hope today you'll find this session useful and make use of this tool for yourselves. Um, there we go. Now just a bit of housekeeping is um, obviously we want you to participate and make full use of the chat box um, and uh, ask questions in there uh, put your comments in there uh, and I'll every few slides I'll just double check in with the chat box or Sibs and um, Derek will let me know um, if I've missed anything. Um, also if you keep your camera on that will be great for me so that if you're falling asleep I'll you know sort that out. Um, I'll know uh, what you're thinking or if, you, if there's an issue you can always raise your hand if you don't want to um, use all the reaction buttons. Um, the um, kind of process we're going to go through is is um, just do a bit of introduction work, um, talk about actually what is the theory of change, try to demystify that, um, look at some great examples which hopefully inspire you in terms of how you want to develop your organisation or your projects uh, theory of change. Um, We'll have a little break and then come back and start working on yours, um, if that would be useful. Everybody is not going to be in the space to do that straight away, but this is to give you enough of a stimulus so that um, you know what's involved. Other people might be really ready to do this. So um, we're trying to reach as broad an audience as we can on, on that, um, but certainly we hope that by the end of the session you'll be much more more informed about it and have a lot more deeper insights into what's what's gone on into this thing that people keep talking about the theory of change um, and I've just given myself a, a little bit of flexibility there at the end in case we run over um, because I, it's quite a deep topic um, and I want to make sure that um, we go through the the range of resources available to you arising out of today does that sound all right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, oh, nice thumb there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> right, introduction. This is what we want you to get out of it. Be introduced to the concept, check all the examples, um, and start prodding yourself about what could your theory of change start to look like. Um, can I ask actually, forget about going into groups because there's not that many of us here, is if you can unmute 
and let's just introduce ourselves. Um, uh, I'll start in a moment, but when I ask you, when we go around, um, can you say your name? Give us an insight into what your organisation does. Um, let us know if you've got experience already of what theory of change is, uh, what you'd like to get out of the session. Um, and I think there's some people who already know each other, but other people who don't. And so that would be good if we, we all hear it. Um, so please go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, very briefly, I'm Sonam Matani. Uh, I've been a development consultant with Black Southwest Network for three years. Prior to that, I was the chief exec of a charity based in Tottenham called the Selby Trust, which managed Selby Centre, um, which is an old school building with over 100 community groups, charities, clubs, um, training providers, organisations that are led by people in the community. Um, it generated over a million pounds and 75% of that was earned income. So. 20 of our staff salaries could come through our account without a drop of grant aid. Um, so um, that's a little bit about me. Um, my experience of theory of change is um, it can be quite complex. Um, and so I hope today, if nothing else, we uh, simplify it and make it much more accessible for you to engage with. Um, what I'd like to, that's what I'd like to get out of it, you know, just to um, take some of this edge off it and make it easier. Um, over to you. Um, Melissa, could we start with you? Yeah, so I'm Melissa. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of an organisation called Sunflower Collective. Can you hear me? Yeah, a little bit. Maybe it's just the old hearings going. No, it's this laptop. Usually I have to do it like this, so okay. <laughs> that's going to have to be it. Um, yeah, one of the co-founders of an organisation called Sunflower Collective. We run um, holiday clubs for young people um, based outdoors in open green spaces and bringing in creativity. Okay. Um, and I would like to begin a social enterprise in um, running a forestry social enterprise that would work within Sunflower Collective. And my knowledge of theory of change is, I'm just here to learn. I'm here to learn. I just see the title, okay. so I'm open. Brilliant. Okay, thank you. And who would you like to hand over to? I can't see any of the other. Let okay. me see. I can only. Oh, there we go. I'll hand it to um, Clara. Hello. Um. My name's Clara. Um, I uh, work for Bristol Green Capital Partnership um, and we're a network of um, over a thousand member organisations um, from sole traders to SMEs to like institutions in Bristol that are uh, attacking the climate and eco ecological emergency. Um, I'm also uh, part of the East and Southeast Asian Solidarity Group. Um, and uh, at the partnership, um, we're currently, one of our objectives is to develop a theory of change. Um, my experience of uh, theory of change has been quite um, uh, minimal. Uh, I've, well, I've been part of like an exercise to try and, um, develop a theory of change um, but yeah didn't work very closely on that but I think my understanding is it's a it's a description of like why your way of um, working is uh, effective and like how uh, and it will show how change will happen uh, in like the short medium long term so that's my, my understanding and um, uh, I would just like to build on that uh, essentially and be able to learn how to sort of um yeah go through that whole process as opposed to just being part of part of a small bit of that um yeah okay. uh, i will pass it on to uh oh rosina hi i've just joined the space um after running 
yeah, from a, from my job. Um, <laughs> I um I so my name is Rosina, and um I wear quite a few different hats. Um, I know Clara because Clara is actually a colleague of mine. Um, I'm a black and green ambassador, which is part of um a, I'm sort of on a leadership program co-founded by Ujima Radio and Bristol Green Capital Partnership. And Clara helps to coordinate a lot of our activities. Um, it's all about community engagement and um, sort of finding, well, our emphasis is on um, climate justice. Our emphasis is on climate justice and the social justice like, aspect of it, saying that they're both the same thing, basically. And we specifically look at it through a lens. Of, uh, we specifically look at black and brown communities um, engaging them but also going into spaces and working in organizations and sort of give, like um holding accountability where it's due and sort of challenging that so i'm all about challenging things um but outside of my environmental activism i do i'm an artist and i like i sing and i paint and draw and i, I always think that art is the most engaging way it's the most engaging catalyst and conscious shifter um and then, I, yeah, there's a few other people in this space that I sort of do projects with, such as Sunflower Collective with Melissa. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping to just, I guess, learn more from other people and yeah, see how I can apply this to things I do and maybe have more ideas on how, how to bring about effective change in a really holistic and inclusive way, um, yeah. And got lots of different business ideas that are all in the sort of the general, uh, sort of sorry, general sort of area of creativity, environment, and community and care. So yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'll pass like it on. I've had a very good explanation there. Thank you. I think it's funny. I'm in an office where it suddenly got busy. I'm yeah. Move to a corner. Who would you like to hand over to? Um. Let's see. You're on the so move. Who, hasn't, who hasn't spoken yet? Mo, Mo, have you spoken? Mo Stacey? I'll pass it on to Mo Stacey. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Thank you, Rosina. Yes, my name is Mo Stacey. Um, most, well, some people call me Mo for short, so you can decide which one you want to go for. Um, pronouns are they, them. And I'm just thinking, um, so I am one of the co-founders of Sunflower Collective. Um, so along with Melissa, we can found that together. Aside from that, I also wear many, many other hats. Um, but one of my newer hats is I am starting up my business. Well, I've reframed and relaunched my personal business, which is a self-love coaching um, business, which I run online. And I'm not just a self-love coach, I'm a life coach. I coach anywhere from academics, um, academic coaching to life coaching through the means of self-love. Um, my biggest portfolio of clients are young people at the moment, actually, from the LGBTQ community. So I've just finished a call with a new client that I'm going to have, which is lovely. And I've partnered up with a company called Naos Therapy to do that. Um, yeah, so that is that is my business and my experience of the theory of change. I would say that I'm, I don't have a full understanding of the theory of change, but I feel like my business in itself is in fact a theory of change because it is looking at doing things in a different way as to the conventional way that we normally do things to gain better results basically of having a happier healthier um life emotionally spiritually and mentally so all of those things come into my business that i do them and um i would just like to learn more about um the theory of change itself and just have a greater understanding because like i said i feel like my business actually lends itself to that naturally but I don't know how to put that into words, basically. So that's that's why I'm here to learn. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I will pass it on to um, the Black Southwest Network group. <laughs> the whole of people there. around that table <laughs> who, who hopefully are still with us. So I was wondering if you can hear me. Um, right, so um, my name is Heidi. 
and um, my business is. Oh, I'm talking to the camera. Okay, right. I'm taking the camera. Sorry. Um, my name is Ivy. I don't like the camera. Uh, my name is Ivy, and um, my business is called Healing Steps PIC. It is a business that is created around supporting women and children who have either experienced domestic violence or they are women who visited or other people who experience domestic violence. And the purpose of me creating this business is to support those these women so that they can um, take back control of their lives and uh, either upskill their ability skills, support their mental health, um, but also to educate young people um, who are growing up now to know what counts as domestic violence, the impacts of domestic violence and their education, work, career, and family life as well. Um, just so that Moving forward, hopefully, with my little support, the people and the young people engage with me will be more aware and more knowledgeable of what it is to actually reduce the numbers of people who are like, experiencing it or perpetrating it. Um, yeah, so that is me. In terms of what the theory of change means, I don't really um, have a clear understanding of what it is. Now, uh, I tend to understand things when they are really, really simplified, really dumbed down. So I may know what it is, but I may not know that it's called the theory of change. So I'm here to learn and find out what it is. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm struggling a little bit to hear. I can hear some things, but I can't hear everything. Um, and I'm wondering if we can give whoever's speaking the mic. No problem. Or has Derek taken it home? <laughs> <laughs> Is that allowed? Derek, I won't tell anyone. Just bring it back. Hi, my name is Mandy. Um, I'm Amazing. actually here representing um, Bristol Empowering Food Hub. I think that speaks for itself. It's a food that would be a food hub that we're actually creating. Um, the, with regards to um, what does theory of change mean to me? I'm the same as Ivy. I wouldn't like to say what it is because it'd be complete, I could completely misconstrue what the meaning really is in your sense. So I'm waiting to hear what the, the direction you're coming from and then we'll be able to kind of decipher um, the situation from there. Thank you. Myra? Uh, I'm Myra. Uh, I don't represent any organization. I'm actually a student. I don't think I understood. Um, what this group was meant for, but uh, I don't, as of now, have an experience with the theory of change, but I came here, I think, because I just wanted to learn how to engage with communities, because it's easier to do it from a screen, listening to stories and whatnot, but I think it's just something I want to learn how to do, and then see where that goes. And Amir. Hi, my name is Amir, and I'm a student. By now, I do not have any experience, but I'm sure I feel I can learn and to develop any skills and to do my dreams in the future. And that's it. Okay. Is there anyone else around the table? I think we're okay. Uh, yeah. okay. Um, cool. Is John still available on the screen? John and Bobby. Yep, I'm still here. Um, my name's John Newey. I am the CEO of Worcester Community Trust. Um, I was formerly the MD of Docklands Community Centre, um, and I tend to work with a lot of community organisations in the St Paul's area. I'm here just to refresh and simplify my um, confidence in theory of change, just to, to communicate better, basically, the things I do and the things my organisations do. Thank you, John. And Bobby? Hi, yeah, um, I'm still here. Uh, I am not going to put my camera on tonight. I'm not feeling well. No one needs to see it. But um, I'm Bobby. I am uh, a few things. I'll actually be with a few of you guys next week. So I just wanted to sit in and um, be immersed in the energy that you guys have been um, steeping yourselves in. I don't have any experience with the theory of change, but a lot of the coaching work that I do and the 
new initiatives I'm building for women in business. Um, when I saw the description lent itself really nicely to, to jumping in. And I think the best thing about teaching is getting to experience what your students experience as well. So I just wanted to kind of come in and say hi a little bit early and go on this journey with you guys. Great, thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Donna, do you have any more volume on your, uh, on your computer? More what? Volume, is your volume? Okay, let me just check that out, hang on a second. Oh, what's going on? Hello, Rosina. Hello. <laughs> um, oh, hey, I can see myself. Oh, hello. Um, I just wanted to... Just wanted to say I don't think I shared like the my experience on the theory of change because it got quite hectic in the office but I just wanted to say that I just want thing really quickly that one thing one thing that I've observed when it comes to the process of change at least is that there's always conflict and conflict's not necessarily a negative thing like it's it's usually when there's conflict there's it shows that there's a shift it shows that there's something happening and that's from my own experiences working in environmental justice and community engagement but also being a bearded woman and sort of like challenging people's perceptions around that and conversation and sort of kind of recognizing commonalities and bridges like forming those bridges and that that for me is what my experience of change is and i'm really looking forward to seeing what yeah okay well that, without further ado um let's crack on um these are these are some of the ways that um, people have tried to use the idea of theory of change. Um, so um, let's have a look at some of these ideas. One is to help um, for people running enterprises um, and sometimes even just running your own life is what is the plan? What is the direction? Um, sometimes it is about raising resources or trying to impact on other people, persuade them of your point of view, uh, challenge their perspective um, and have an influence that way. Um, sometimes we get caught up in the passion and we're not being straightforward about actually this is what we're trying to achieve. And um, the, the landscape is quite crowded in terms of information. So you know, our, our best ideas sometimes can um, get drowned out. The um, one of my favorite aspects is is to communicate stuff on one page um, to to do it visually, uh, to use some of the creative skills that we've got in Bristol uh, to get concepts across that, um, you know, open up the door to people who um, might just look at the word theory and think yuck that's not me i'm practical i'm dynamic i'm on the move um but uh in in sort of defense of theory is uh sometimes you need to think something through before you spend a lot of money on it or take action on it um sometimes it's good to map it out so you can see is this really working um is this going to go where i want it to go or am i missing something um, uh, and sometimes working with, you know, here we've got this uh, sort of jargonistic word stakeholders um, is um, how do we get them to buy into our agenda? So this, this is the sort of tool that it is. Um, this is the sort of range of things that it can help you do. Um, and one of one of the strengths of it is it can enable you to break things down into steps so that you can see where things are going. Um, I think that people um, come to this task with a certain mindset and it can be. Um, um, maybe it's the theory bit of it, it can be a bit alienating, but um, if you're coming to it wanting the clarity, uh, you can see where you're each person is going to have their own unique um, enterprise or project or idea um, or direction as a student uh, or be part of an organization um, with their own little corner within it. You can make your unique contribution by seeing where you fit into the bigger picture. Um, 
and the world might not be like this, but each of us can have leadership qualities. Um, and uh, by being engaged in the analytical space, um, we can apply our own sense of science in terms of um, uh, what are we doing? How are we going about doing that? Um, and asking questions about um, how are we going to get to that big impact moment? Um, what does it take? What are the components that will lead us to that? So there's a lot of discovery involved in the theory of change. Um, it's feeling things out and it's being comfortable with not always knowing what the answers are um, and seeing if um, we can test, uh, we can put ourselves in a process when we're testing ourselves and seeing I'm trying this out, I'm doing my best to put all the relevant bits together. Is it going to work? Um, and seeing what comes out of that over a period of time. Um, the other thing is that um, um, it is quite um, productive to work with other people in developing your theory of change. And that could be these stakeholders who you might want funding from or you want to pitch your enterprise idea to, um, or it could be your peers. And so it's interesting There's some people within the same organization and you might have totally different perspectives, even though you're in the same organization <clears throat> um, about what it's, how it's setting about achieving its goal. Um, and so it's a, it's a good way to collaborate with other people. Um, this is a, a diagram of, you know, what we see on top, uh, if we're running an organization or wanting to set up an organization. Um, on the surface is what we say about it, uh, what we might have on our website or in our documents, um, and the vision, the strategy, uh, our official goals, um, how we say we do things. Um, and then kind of underneath the water is a whole lot of more subjective, um, unwritten, processes and rules and stories and lived experience um, about the way things really get done. I don't know if this resonates with anyone about the hidden nature of those things. Um, and so it's the same in any uh, organization that is trying to get things done. So in your enterprise, in your project idea, you know, on the surface, how you're communicating it is one thing and what how you're able to get that set of actions together, uh, the challenges that you might be going through might be uh, something that isn't visible to the naked eye. And so what we're um, saying is that a theory of change needs to take some of this stuff underneath the water into account when you're trying to change the world. Um, So what is a theory of change? Well, it is the, it is about the how, you know, it's about the missing middle in a project, a program, an organization. Uh, and so you can transparently see what are the major steps, actions uh, required to bring about a goal. And it's something, if it's, let's say it's your project, your organization, you know, you're, you're in charge of putting that step-by-step -step process together uh, towards a goal. Um, and as we've seen, you know, underneath the surface, there's lots of assumptions and, you know, what appears logical um, may not be logical in how it pans out. Um, I think somebody gave me, I don't know if other people have had this experience, but um, I used to work on a homeless project and, um, when I was very green about it, uh, I thought the problem was housing. It wasn't, that was just uh, a symptom and part of the problem, sure, but not the whole deal. So even if I could give housing to a person, I couldn't take away the um, lifestyle that they'd got accustomed to living and they might feel very lonely and um, disconnected from the world by being, by being left alone in a flat of their own, albeit 
you know, it's off the streets. Um, and so it's really about the kinship and friendships and all the social connections that made a difference to them feeling complete. Um, the I don't know if anyone else has got a sense of that in terms of uh, hidden assumptions. Does anyone want to comment on that? Uh, um, I'm thinking that with um, with the space of domestic violence, for example, yeah, you would think that the person who's being abused, they want it's just a case of getting them out of it, and then that's it. However, they may have formed some sort of attachment to the abusers. They may be financially dependent on the abuser. They may be in it for several different reasons. They might be assumptions that I'm not really considering. Whereas I'm just thinking about, okay, I want to support this person to get out. Yeah, that is a very strong, strong example. Um, Anyone else? Did anyone else want to comment from their experience of what you've seen about assumptions that aren't visible? I think, yes, um, I think I see those assumptions a lot, especially when I work in education, um, teaching and coaching um, young students as well, is that teachers or you know people who would refer these kids to me had one assumption of something going on and until you actually start speaking to them you start to find that there's a whole host of things going on it's not just how they're identifying or what their background that they come from it's a whole mixture of things and there's this middle ground that nobody's really talking about or things that are not actually being recognized um for them to be able to open up fully about who it is that they are but I feel like in, a, in certain sectors, uh, that missing middle is massive. And, and schools is one of them, you know, where we just, we just seem to miss a complete gray area of other things going on. That is a catalyst for what we're seeing as opposed to what we're seeing being the actual issue. Great. I think they're both really good examples that you've used there, like both um, people just shared. Uh, one thing that came to my head, which is, a, I guess, um, a bit more simple to explain, is that um, I guess when it comes to engagement in the environmental um, justice sector, like a lot of, it's a very, it's very white dominated. So a lot of people, and you, you don't see many black and brown people taking up space in those, in, in like, in these, in this sort of in that sector and you could assume that oh these people aren't interested like black and brown people aren't interested in the environment and that that might be the reason why and it's like no like and because a lot of people say oh but these services they exist and stuff that they're, they're accessible they're in the people can just go to them they're the, they're not interested that's the reason why they're not involved and it's actually no it's not because they're not interested it's because of a lot of other issues that are there's a lot of other like hurdles for, for these people like, engaging and and often often when you when you go into the communities and speak to um black and brown people they're already engaging in it and they're already doing things but it's just not recognized in a mainstream way and it doesn't get in it doesn't get the recognition and and sometimes they're just using different languages and and it's just like yeah and a lot of people they may be doing their own thing but they just don't want to get into the mainstream spaces because it just they can't that it doesn't engage them they don't feel represented so it's looking at all the other factors around that and the intersectional kind of issues that might it might be like financial things like oh they're too busy working so they don't have time but it's not that like they're not interested so it's just yeah there's a lot you can it just opens up a whole whole yeah. thing that when you start exploring it yes very true very good examples uh, I hope I'm not missing anyone from the table. If anyone else wanted to have a comment, or we can carry on. <clears throat> okay. I think we can carry on, Sarah. Okay, thank you. I need that signposting, Derek. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not going here, you know. Uh, <clears throat> right. Um, so the point of the theory of change is to reveal the assumptions, you know, 
Uh, sometimes they don't have to be negative assumptions. They can be even, um, you know, you can be open about it's about it's about the transparency. Um, so I think um, I think it was Clara who who absolutely hit the nail on the head to say, you know, theory of change is about understanding how change happens. Um, and these are the kind of stages that if you were developing your own theory of change, you would need to identify what are the inputs that you're putting into it. Um, you know, i.e. what are the resources that you're uh, finding to um, put into it? Is it time? Is it money? Is it space? Is it expertise, skills? Because that's how, you know, those um, conditions that you're creating are are gonna lead the change in a particular direction um, and within theory of change activities are separate to inputs um, because inputs are the resources and activities are the things that you do with the resources to um, uh, activate the situation to uh, you know it could be bring people together it could be um, put on a campaign it could be training it could be advice it could be a whole range of things that happen in the social sector to um to have an impact on human beings um and between human beings um you know it could be coaching um uh, it could be you know helping somebody find a job uh, whatever it takes uh, it's actually defining what those activities are um and labeling them, you know, as discrete items on a menu. I did these things. Um, the the thinking is within the theory of change is that the combination of resources with the activities leads to outputs. These are measure, measurable in the sense of they're numerical. Um, the, um, you know, the space offered training to young enterprises and it led them to produce their own theory of change that would be an output um what was the outcome well within the theories of change uh were mapped out a series of outcomes around supporting people holistically out of their situation to have a better life i'm keeping it general because i'm thinking of the domestic violence but also the climate change examples that we've heard but um the example here is about you know emotion improved emotional well-being of training participants things that are at the end of the chain uh arising out of the action that has been taken it's way too early for a break but um i wanted to show you some examples as well as real theories of change that people have put together um, and these were emailed out so that you can have a much more up close look at them um, but essentially this is the journey that is being undergone by somebody who wants to put together their theory of change the inputs are the resources um, every action that you do it creates something that you can creates a product that product is an output um, that you know it changes people you can quantify it but uh, the process of producing it results in a change um, and that is the outcome and then over a long period of time um, it could be about you keep doing that or you keep selling that or you keep making that um, that journey with people and that's what the impact is um in a health context it could be um something very logical like this this is more your logical framework model of theory of change where there is uh an intervention like local exercise classes um and doing that physical activity produces um uh, that should be outcome not output um but that physical activity leads to better physical health and over time a longer life um other people have more complicated ones um you know where there's a very big vision around let's say 
achieving a more just, equitable society. Um, and this is a very strong part of the theory of change in terms of saying, yes, I've got a vision. And if we do X, and how are we going to do X? We're going to do it like this. Then we're going to produce Y. So in this example, ensure our vision uh, of what our organization is uh, and means for our groups, our networks. Um, how are we going to do that? We're going to keep our vision at the forefront uh, and make sure our decision making really reflects our vision. You know, our values are strongly held. Um, we don't want to just say we've got this vision and then do, you know, more conventional status quo stuff. Um, the funding that we go and get is going to be in line with that vision. Um, and the output, the outcomes and the outputs that we produce are uh, aligned with that thinking. Again, in collaboration terms, um, we want to have those good quality relationships, you know, based on respect. Uh, we want to be able to apply the principles uh, that we hold dear in how we practice our work. Um, and we know in this in this case, it's obviously a funding body. They um, want to use the knowledge they have to, you know, help those organisations on the ground be more effective, um, and the whole process not be so loaded with the funders' agenda. Um, and the same goes for each of their things that are important to them, whether it's participation or communities deciding stuff for themselves, raising expectations, um, and then sharing that information, disseminating it. Um, so I was, just, I was just thinking, are some funders sort of outcomes maximizers rather than output maximizers in, in the other way around? You know? Yeah. Yes. I mean, I'm sure they thought that was a revolution when they came up with that. Like, why are we counting the beans? what is the big deal about the numbers because the quality isn't there so some have had that revolution you know in their own heads um and at the moment since black lives matter because of covid there had to be a lot of change in how things happened um, and some funders are trying to make the the mental shift that they've had in that time to make that more permanent um which is a kind of crack crack in the wall a crack in the system and how it works normally um, and an opportunity to shake things up. Um, and uh, I'm working with a funding body at the moment um, called Power to Change and they support community businesses. Um, and the way that they want to work with organizations is changing. They still have their program, but in the course of the program, everything is co-designed. Um, so those, those that pursue outcomes tend to be easier to connect with and have a dialogue with and influence compared to the ones counting outputs. How many people did we get on the course? How many jobs? How many, how many? Who's been on those fun programs? They're not that much fun, are they? And uh, we don't know if they make any difference whatsoever because they didn't have a theory of change. Um, this is um, a list of the inputs here on the left, the activities uh, for an organization that's, it could be, you know, develop, it says stronger communities, like at a neighborhood level. Um, is this making sense in terms of your work as an enterprise? For John, it does. Because of the scale of his organization, perhaps. And what if you're running a smaller organization? Is it? Are any of the pieces coming together in your mind when you're looking at a diagram like this? Like, what am I going to do 
for my organization. Does the logic make sense? Hi, Sana. Hi. I think I can definitely see the importance of this, especially when it comes to a funding bid. Yeah. Because you know, if you look at Quartet, for example, they'll ask you what's the input, what's the activity, what's the outcome, how many people are you going to engage with, how do you know this is going to work? And normally at the end, or if, if they've awarded it to you, they'll ask you for some report, probably just to see that you've done the things that you said. So yeah. people are thinking about the different activities that the company provides. Uh, this helps you to think through what each of those activity, how do you resource it? What does it do? Why does it do it? And how do you explain that impact? Um, because in the last workshop, what we did is we looked at the social value numerically of the things that you do. So if you say you, you reduce your offending, how much are you, sell, are you saving government? If you say you're reducing health outcomes, what does that cost to government? So you can then say, you know, uh, for every pound invested in your organization, it's actually two pounds that you put back in the community. So it's something like that. So yeah, this, this makes it simpler, especially when you're looking at funding bids that have got a word criteria. Sure. You know, you gotta keep it short. If you can keep it short here with a one or two pager, you can definitely keep it short on an application, you know? So it stops, it stops waffling. So yeah, that's it. Because in terms of a tool, Okay, the theory of change is a good way for you to bring together all the elements of your project onto one page, all the different thoughts um, in terms of exactly what you're going to put into it. You see, funding is one of the buttons here on the left, you know, it is not the whole gig. And the best way to get funding out of somebody is not to chase the funding element. It's not the money, but the money itself is just one of the components that you need to oil the wheels of this process. Um, and really? It's a very important part because we know that we haven't had it for a very long time, but um, it is the, you're providing all the flesh and the story around why you need the money and what you, what's going to happen if, if we gave it to you as opposed to somebody else. Um, here is one this is this is taking it to the next level if you like i've had to stretch it out just we're not interested in all the detail but we're just looking at the sort of words in bold so you can just see the direction of things again it's all about inputs this is about a young enterprise uh program um so the inputs have been defined they've identified our learning activities that we're doing and here's the quantifiable outputs um, and they know it's not an overnight change. They're not going to rush to achieve a reduction in youth employment or whatever, unemployment, but there's going to be interim changes. You know, it's a journey of change. And so their theory is, here's my step-by-step -step process of how I'm going to get there. And in the middle, I'm going to, I reckon I'm going to achieve some changes in their confidence, their behavior, their attitude, and so on here, um, sorry, here, the learning will might lead to those behavioral changes. Um, and then over time, it's going to lead to a larger change where they'll be in a different place in the labor market. Uh, they'll be able to get jobs, they'll be able to be confident, might even run their own business and create jobs for other people. Um, so you're trying to read the future and in a confident way where you're showing your confidence to who you're pitching your idea to by laying out how's it going to get there um how are we doing how's the energy level in the room good i'm really in like good. the different um varieties of format of that like the the community the education one the, the third one along or the third one back yeah it's really great. I can imagine that in like an annual report where essentially you've got your values at the top, like really broad level stuff. Another one, the the colourful one, that one. This one. That the previous one. Okay. Yeah, that one. Okay. It's just like if we do this by doing this, then we get that 
and these are the values at the top that we sort of I can imagine like me like this is the sort of thing because I'm less interested in giving it to the funders I'm more interested in how do we communicate with all the people we work with like how do we collectively communicate all the different things from like the domestic abuse services to the youth services to all these different things we run in a sort of condensed way that people can look at and go ah okay this is what you guys do and this is the effect of what you achieve and I think seeing all those different versions like was, is really helpful okay all right I am oh sorry <clears throat> did I miss something there I was just asking whether there's any comments in the room uh, for this okay so Sorry. Yeah. So imagine you did a theory of change for each program. Um, and then a theory of change for the whole organization on the basis that each program that someone has maybe has got a lot on its plate already. Yeah. So you have a project. Um, uh, theory of change, and then you have a, a an organization theory of change. Yeah, because maybe sometimes you have programs that don't link up together to put them all together to kind of sing a, 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 a streamlined outcome. Yeah, because you have different audiences. How have you seen many of that, or, or was let it? Say, let me just show you something. It's, good. it's interesting that you have said that. Um, just in terms of um, preparing how you might go about doing it. Okay. You know, yeah. Is um, here is you know a kind of homespun template where it doesn't look flash yet because you're still working things out. Um, and this is you know I think it's been emailed to you, but we can do it again. Uh, if you haven't got it, we can always put this in the chat. Um, just want to get this out of the way. Hang on one second. Get in there. Right. So, you know, the, the objective is, let's say, we want to see more young black people getting jobs. Um, this is how we might go about doing it. You know, these are the kind of standard things that people do. If you're doing it, you'll do it more creatively. Let's say, let's say you're, you got some great contacts. You're gonna um, set yourself some decent targets. You know, we don't want crappy jobs. We want good jobs. You know, people might have student debt to deal with, all sorts of things going on. Um, need the cash to live on. Um, the, you know, the outputs are quantifiable. So this is about putting numbers on things, you know. Uh, I just put 100 there. That's quite a lot. That is what a mainstream training provider might have a contract to deliver. That's a lot. Um, for each person to get a job. And here is a quality job. Um, so... You know, you might calculate on the basis of how many people you want to see being successful. You might work back and say, I'm going to put some numbers onto these type of things. Um, the, this, this model is not the theory of change. This is a logical framework. But it's useful because we are so used to working from left to right. Does that make sense about how you could figure out at home with your particular project? Okay. Just going to reveal all the other text. Um, let's say, you know, you're five years down the road. You're a much more dynamic, experienced organization. You're fed up trying to persuade people uh, in, in, in um, businesses to take on young people. Let's say you might say, do you know what? I've got to get people ready for the future. 
and maybe I can get a contract to do that. It might be that you want to position your organization to be ready for the digital age, the robots, the um, and yes, it might be a whole different set of activities that is much more research, networking, connections, partnerships, um, and saying to funders, yeah, I know you've got money, but guess what? I'm trying to make a change here with my product, my service. Um, I'm trying to get people some real quality here. Um, so you're just going in with a different conversation than funding, funding, funding. Um, and the whole place where you put your target might be in a totally different zone. Uh, you might be out trying to find a particular kind of young person for your program. Oh. And, you know, your own expectations of where you're going to take this and your vision, your recruitment agency, it might be in a totally different league to where you are now. But there's no shame in dreaming. Okay, now if you look at the, comp so this is objectives, activities, outputs, outcomes. Let's go a different way on this. Let's put the outcomes first. Okay, now I don't want to bore you with the same examples, so I've just gone with a different one where I've said, oh, this is about older people's care. So I'm going to target myself on the result I want to achieve. It's the same old thing about activities. There's a range of things that organizations involved in the care world do. Um, and some people will do them in a more interesting way. Um, you know, this is their sort of jargon end of things, but I'm sure we get the gist. There's things that you do to, to make sure that you are achieving what your funders want. Um, things that tell them, yeah, we're doing the business. Um, it might be, I'm, I'm not, you know, I just don't know what it is about this number 100. I love it. <laughs> um, but, you know, your targets might be different. Um, but it's just spinning the plates around so that you're looking at things differently because you're in charge of this space this little world that you're creating on one page that summarizes what your business is, um, is capturing all the key elements. But by shifting to an outcome-led approach, um, just helps you see it slightly differently to this one, which is the, the one that is recommended under the theory of change model. <clears throat> I'm just going to reveal the text here. Again, I've just re reorganized things a little bit um, just by shifting some columns around. So it's not all about new, new, new. It's just rolling the information in your head. Um, so that you see it, see it slightly differently. Now, <clears throat> you can help me here because I couldn't think of anything. What are the inputs that you need to care for people who are older, vulnerable, Um, we still have a lot to date with information so we can help them the best way. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Mm. People who can go and visit them in their home spaces, so carers. So, Sarah. Yeah. So, let's say, for example, then, you've done this for. Uh, few of your projects, done this for your organization. Um, for me, the benefit I see is that when you see a particular fund that says, um, this fund is there to support uh, young people struggling with mental health, then you already know because one of the outcomes that you 
contributes, that's a fund that you can apply for. Um, you know, so because you know of the outcomes that you provide, it makes it easier to also target the kind of funding that you're looking for, you know? Yeah, yeah. You worked out your answers before you hit the forms, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, by I, I, I thought it's quite quite a useful tool for identifying what strengths of your organization is. And if it's uh, creating activities, you know, you could maybe start from that position as opposed to kind of the the, the sort of out, outcome stage and then start to map out where, where those activities could actually deliver, you know, um, targeted outputs and outcomes in the way. Um, that matches some of the funding that you may want to obtain to continue to be able to that or to Yeah, absolutely. It is. And by going through this process is, you know, this is the, the logic model here. And, but you can spin around. So you, you need to go through this as your stage one and then change it around. You've got the answers. But you're, you know, you might add another column here, a bit more detail. These are the things that tell you, yes, I'm making progress en route. Um, so that you can arrive at your theory of change. And by now, you know your stuff. You know, you've gone through it because you've processed it in your mind several times in different ways. So, um, you know, sometimes I'm going to go and do a presentation. I need to know my stuff. I need to feel like I'm not looking at my slides. I know I'm confident. I know what I'm talking about. I feel um, comfortable with my information about my business, about what I'm doing, what I'm hoping for, how I've organized it, where's it going. Um, it, it's, it's not that you're... Um, uh, project hasn't got it in it to get the funding it has but your your conveyance of that information is so important so i always hear this about people say i don't know the language <laughs> i don't know the language that's why i'm not getting the funding but i can see that if you have this template that you've already done and you you find a big writer or whatever they've got so much to start and it makes it easier for them to, you know, move on with, with where you started. And equally, they can always add other information onto it based on the funding that, that they're actually going to go um, and source. So, yeah, it's, it's an amazing template. So, you know, the, the thing about this, um, this page here just symbolizes what you're doing by having a theory of change. You're building your own confidence so that you know where you're going, what your target is, but also the middle bit, you're solving the middle bit um, by allowing yourself to have the headspace, the space and time to shift from chancing your arm with, with you know, an application to actually saying, no, I've got a clear route to change. Um, and so that is very inspiring for the funder at the other end who might receive a proposal or a stakeholder that you're trying to build a relationship or even just somebody in your peer group that you know maybe you feel like actually the collaboration would make you both stronger um and you know your confidence in your uh organization's content is uh persuasive because you seem to have worked it out um so in that sense you know it's more than a tool just for funding or um, uh, operationalizing what you're doing. It is um, the process of doing it changes you. The amazing thing is that and it's only, you know, only an A4 sheet with a few columns. But um, should we have a break um, for about 10 minutes? Anna, it's your workshop. <laughs> no, I think you should. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Take five, get a coffee or tea or whatever, and I'll see you back in here um, at 1853. Must have been a good year. I'm going to look up at what happened in 1853.
Cool, cool. Thank you, Sarah. All right, cool. I'll see you soon. Got till 1853. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's some coffees there for you. I reckon Siv. Hi. Um, I just wondered if um, I could have access to the recording of this because I'm in a I'm in an I'm in an I'm in the Ujima office and it's been quite hectic and the doorbell's been going. I had to go and answer the doorbell and there were parts of the presentation that I found were really really interesting. But unfortunately, I had to I missed a few of the conversations. Um, just wondered if I'd be able to. Um, like, like kind of listen back, rewatch. <laughs> this feels really weird. <laughs> How's that work, sir? You're all thinking about it. You better think about it, Rosina. <laughs> <laughs> no, because well, it's just intellectual like property in the shed of the well there, uh, Rosina. Pardon? That's our intellectual property in the shed of the well there. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's so as enter intellectual property, really. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. You're, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. That is totally right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we took a break. <laughs> Suddenly got really quiet in this office now that there's a break. I'm just I'm ready for the I'm ready for the Zoom and I and no one's here now. <laughs> so, anyway. They all just in. But... <laughs> I did. But they just in. Or oh, oh, it's just yeah. a... Quiet. Quiet. Everybody out. I've locked the door. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. a great time. <laughs> Most people have gone home by now, but like when I came, when I started, it was like the kettle was boiling in the background and yeah. like shouting and talking and the doorbell was going, but it's, it's peaceful now. What what time does this go on until? Um, it goes on until half seven. Four past seven. It's almost seven o'clock. Yeah. Look at that. Mm. Look at that. I just came this almost seven o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. <laughs> so funny. I can see myself on that camera, on the on the screen. Yeah. 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 I'm testing something. I'm testing something. Don't worry. I'm testing something. I want to try to speak up for the TV. Is it? Yeah. I was in the Oh yeah, I can hear you. 
And then we'll see all that. Something else is still, I'm, I'm just testing it. And, uh, I want to try to use the speaker from the TV. So yeah. if you're speaking, uh, I'll try to test for that. I was there. There is something. I can hear you, but because there's other people talking, it's quite distorted. I guess if, if it was during an actual session, maybe if, if one person was talking, it would be okay. If you want to talk now, and I'll see if it's clear. No, you just can say sorry about the words if I get Social chat, yeah. yeah. It's going to be a full of. I need you to carry on speaking. Yeah. I'm testing the sound from your side. Yeah. Tell us about your day. Tell us about your day. Okay. I went to a really nice. Um, sort of, I went to the Paintworks, which is in Arnest Vale, um, to a kind of a conference-y, kind of networky event with like loads of stalls and lots of freebies and things like that. So I'm happy, I've got lots of free pens today, lots of um, pad, 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 pads of paper and things like that. Um, and Miss Devine, she did a panel discussion, really, really good. She's, she just basically, everybody claps every time she spoke. Um, talking about a just transition um, and like how to sort of kind of balance out the fast, like the act moving quickly, but also moving fairly, like fast and fair. Um, and then somebody pulled out of another panel discussion and somebody asked me last minute to talk and I did, which was fun. That's how my day's been. And now I'm here. Is that enough talking? Or do you want me to keep talking? La, 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 la. I'm just going to stop talking unless you want me to keep talking. Was he now on networking event you bought it? What was it called? I don't know. What was the networking event that you went to? What was it called? Oh, good question. It was <laughs> With the sound, yeah, very good. Thank you. Which, what are you using in the end? Are you using the mic in the TV or the little thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm using the TV now. Am I being called upon? You are. Yes. Come hither. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, How are you doing? What a fantastic, oh, fantastic. Yeah, really. Hi. And Rosina's been here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Looking oh, after my intellectual property, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Is it? Um, yeah, well, I... Um, great to... Um, go on. Okay, so here's here's what I'm proposing. On the... Uh, agenda is for you all to develop your theory of change. Um, and when you've got an organization that's fully functional and happening, that's all great. But what if you're developing a project? Is that something that would be helpful to you? This is a question. Yeah, it's a question for the group. Yeah. Especially the people on the table, because you're a little bit further away from me and I can't always um, catch what you're saying, but I don't want you to feel um, that I'm not close to you because I am. I'm following your every move, your every smile, your every frown. I'm connected. Right? And I, I want it to be useful. To you. Yes. Yes, we're getting. 
in the I room. can hear male voices very loudly and clearly, but I can't hear the people sitting on the table. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, great. Yeah, that, that feels better. <laughs> right. So, um, in your email before the session, you were sent one of these. And would it be helpful for you to figure out what are your inputs and activities and so on? Well, I'll send that to people that are joining online. Oh, so, I see. I see. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah? That's how you're going to get your theory of change together. So can we start talking about that? In terms of, let me just copy this whole page, like so, paste it here. <clears throat> ah, there we go. So. Right. So in terms of I'm just going to give you a bit of time to start thinking about your own theory of change. Using this method. You've all disappeared. Ah, there you are. Um, Zoom is great, but you can only do one thing at a time on it. Um, so, yeah, so for example, um, the inputs are the resources that uh, you're going to put into your project or your um, enterprise or your organization. The activities are the things that you're going to do. Probably very familiar with those. And the outputs are the um, results. Ideally numerical results. And how will you know if you're making any progress? because you'll be able to track usually sometimes oh i've gone you know if you're in a car and you're on a journey from here to edinburgh you'll say oh i've traveled 50 percent of the way there it's usually a percentage indicator i'm on the right track what are the um results that your longer term results that you might aim for And then some things, you know, so far in the future, you can't tell yet if you're ever going to get there, but you're hopeful, you're ambitious. That's the situation we're in with climate change or, you know, so kind of beyond us, we might have uh, left it too late. But we're still going to try. So whatever situation you've got within your enterprise, I'm going to leave you alone for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to check in with you. So I need that reassurance. Paranoids win. And if anyone needs any help, you can text me or ask Derek or Sibs. But if you ask Sibs, he's going to tell you it's a funding application, right? Which it could bloody well be. Which is no bad thing, you know. I'm not down on the funders. And feel free to message me if you need, okay?
I'll leave you alone for 10 minutes. <clears throat> and please, please feel free to have a snack en route. Absolutely, Clara, you've got the right idea. This is hard brain work you're doing. I'm not visible, but I'm present. Mo, which slides did you want to see? This one?
My son, I have a coffee guy. Thank you. <laughs> so, shall we, shall we start with the people sitting at the table to just go around um, and just tell us what you found hard about it and what you found easy in each of your efforts and where there's still any hazy oh, gap. We've got two individuals who've quite experienced at this. We've got two individuals who are starting out in the okay. social enterprise. Journey. I'm sure they'll all change the world, but you know, they're uh, kind of at different levels. So uh, hopefully, we are sympathetic to that. We can start with. They collaborated. They collaborated. Sorry, I did. And <laughs> That's what we want. That's the zone we're moving into. Absolutely. They're ahead of the game. Oh, what were we saying? 
Tell us what you found hard and tell us what you found easy and if there's any gaps in your effort to do a theory of change in 15 minutes. This is big. <laughs> it's a big ask from me, so. Yeah. All right. Well, um, what I found difficult was the impact in the input um, because she sort of, we sort of um, kind of focus on the activities, but not the input was kind of um, missed out in that sense. But I'm thinking, even though the input is, is, is the first column, we can always list the activities and then find out what the input is afterwards. So we kind of also found the short term and the long term a bit easier than maybe the um, yeah and maybe the input and um, and and the output. So the activities and the short term and long term were the bits that we found a bit easier, um, but the other bits were a bit more difficult. But I think by working backwards, yeah, I think that would kind of solve itself really. In my book, in my mind, I could be completely wrong. And is the inputs hard because you're needing to get the resources together and you're not there yet, or uh, yes. anything else? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The resources, the funding, all of that. Yes. And so has this exercise helped to move, move you closer towards being able to make a better case about the money? It will do when it's fun, when it's completed. Yes. Yeah. Great. It'll be will be more concise into putting into the wording into the funding bills. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Wonderful. Sibs always gets what he wants out of it. He does. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Carry on. Next. Mara, uh, I think the difficult part was being able to quantify the results and of because they're not um on hundred yeah because they're not uh they're just not things you can measure which I guess is what you had we were looking for from the presentation. But then the activity itself is simple. Um it's pretty much setting up an Instagram page and then the resources are simple, the outputs are easy to measure. So it's just the results that we want at the end, even if the activity is built into it. But then I guess you have to do it and let's see if it works. Then try something else. It doesn't. Yeah, I think that's fair enough, isn't it? Like you don't know the extent of your inputs in detail. And so quantifying is going to be a challenge um, when we're doing it like this off the top of our heads. But um, and But the rest of it was okay. Yeah, the resources are uh, pretty mapped out what exactly would be needed. Um, activities, figured out outputs, yeah. uh, know how to measure them. It's just the trying to see if you build a sense of community. That's it's not easy to measure. That's the part that's kind of difficult to see how I right. actually measure that. Okay, lovely. Yeah. Okay, and and your colleague next to you there. I can just see. Oh. That's it. Thank you. Yes, the most hard thing is um, the input and the, the progress which you are not measuring. Because when you are doing the input, you don't have the, enough networking and the people which you need to work with them. And you need to be like an agency as a first. At the first time, then you search for resources and uh, things which it can bring you to the next step. Okay. Okay, so it's quite hard for me to hear you for some I reason. Think, Just the technicals. I think, I think a minute had lots of ideas, which is another thing you could potentially use this for because uh, we had a discussion and a lot of it was run up on lots of ideas and how do yeah. I. Kind of begin to kind of structure the domain and hang uh, and, and with that. That's right. It is kind of you are the master of your own universe sort of tool, you know, that you can um, drop some things, develop some things, move them around, um, and process them, you know, to see if they're, they're valid for you because it's test and learn. Okay, carry on. That's everybody there.
great. And then in terms of who's on Zoom, you know what happens is when you're on Zoom, we're all closely connected because we're all on Zoom. But I know from my family gigs that those that are on the table, it's a, it's a struggle. Um, but uh, luckily we've got our guys on the case. So thanks, Sibs and Derek. So can we move around the room to Melissa? Is this a good moment to ask you about your theory of change? Yeah, I just need to unmute myself. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. Um, what I found easy was realizing that it's already what, what we're doing anyway, just having it blocked out in different columns, allowed to see really how much progress is already being made which I can see that will benefit. It's like almost like a cycle, see how that will benefit the missing links of the input anyway, which is often funding, yeah. not fixating on that and noticing it's already running very smoothly. Yeah. Um, the thing that felt a little bit more difficult was the indicators of progress. I think someone mentioned it just before and they were saying about like quantifying the, like what you're feeling and knowing is already happening and how to present that that was more difficult sure okay well um this this stage that we're doing just caught kind of doing the big structural pieces around the board if you like is the first step and then when this is established and solid then you can go into the whole indicator piece um mm. um so this is a kind of introduction, um, but I'm sure that you and many other people are interested in the measuring the indicators. Thing. Yeah, so, so, so what I'll do is I'll send um, a tool, a, a document that's got how to measure social impacts and gives you values against okay, different indicators. So mental health, community cohesion, what's the value to those kind of things, yeah? So you can put it into a numeric form, all right? I'll follow up on, on the email if that's all. Right. And, and there's a whole list of resources at the end of this presentation. I mean, mountains of links where you can seriously drown in the range of indicators that you want to find, you know, it's all out there. And so hopefully us signposting you to some of those resources will help you speed up that phase that follows this one okay all right but i'm glad some bits of it are easier and you're already moving in the right direction uh and mo are you part of that same enterprise or have you got another take on it in terms of your um, yeah i actually focused on my own business yeah okay great um Coaching. <laughs> yes um and i found i found bits of it quite hard um like my output or even my long-term output because like when you're coaching the output is really dependent on the client and what they come to you for yeah. um so i have got some stuff so and i've I found my inputs were a lot easier because I know what I want, what I need and what I want to input. Yeah. Some of it is already happening. Some, a lot of it isn't <laughs> and needs to happen at some point. Thank God. Um, the activities, I mean, I could have gone on with a list of activities, but the more I kept writing, the more I was like, this really looks like burnout because are you really going to do all these activities? And really... It's kind of just solidified something that's been in my head, which is actually changing some of the plan of having people work for me rather than me having to do everything. I really just don't like stress. That's what I've come to realize with this. I don't like stress. Yeah. I want to sleep and have good 10 hours sleep a night. Well, that's, that's, that's a serious strategic goal. Ever I heard yes. one. Yes, it's it's a. Even though you're thinking about it, it can seeing it on paper, it can really wake you up and like go. Oh, I'm just expecting too much of myself. I'm being too hard on myself. Yeah. Um. 
and once you've gone through that and you're on the other side, you can come and coach the rest of us. All right. Of course. You know, this can't is client wait. generating strategy, Mo. All right. <laughs> it's, it's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's helpful because if one of your columns is full of stuff and the other columns are not full of much, that's an indicator to yourself to review your thinking, your planning. And it might be that you need to choose a particular niche and other people can can pick up the other slack that arises because you can't do everything especially exactly. if you're a startup um and and if you do choose to go specific then some people will come to you for that and you can be really good at that um um and still generate an income from being excellent at something particular yeah yeah um, I think that's what I'm finding and, and all of yeah. us are learning that to be honest Mo you know it's not a it's not anything that people have gone down got down pat it's it's the the learning journey is part of it <clears throat> yeah. I've thought of becoming a habit coach because when I've mastered my bad habits I'll have something <laughs> to say I'm not there yet <laughs> I can't wait for that <laughs> me too <laughs> um Clara Hello. Um, so I was doing a theory of change for um, the East and Southeast Asian Solidarity Group, um, or ECs for short. Um, what did I find difficult? I think uh, it kind of took me a while to sort of shift through um, sort of what short term and long term outcomes, but I think I've it kind of clicked towards the end. Um, probably progress indicators, I think, um, just because I don't feel like I'd want to say like how things should um, move and grow and change. It kind of, um, yeah, feels maybe not pointless, but I think <clears throat> There's so many other things that are out of my control that would determine that, if that makes sense. So um, I see the point in them, but yeah, I think I struggle to like come up with numbers to, that's um, uh, I don't know, useful or even accurate. Um, and I think also probably thinking outside of the box in terms of like um, activities actually, because um, we've only started with quite a small group and just growing. So we've only done a handful of different types of activities. Yet yeah, our kind of vision and like goals are like quite big and broad. And yeah, it's trying to like think of more activities that will help us get there, if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. That's really interesting because. Um... A is if you did this exercise, but with your group, uh, people by having other people's input, they could help shape what is realistic or tangible and 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 help fill the middle about how, you know, if our goal is huge, but our resources are small and what we can actually achieve, how are we going to build that bridge and maybe everything hasn't got to be done by your organization. It can be in collaboration with others. Um, yeah, that's a really you know, good point. It's potential. Um, but yeah. your existence and your ask of them might change something for them, you know, in the um, in the energy, in the relationships, in the action that follows. You know, you can make a bigger splash by, mm. uh, by working with other people. Yeah, definitely. That's such a good point. Um, um, just quickly, I think one thing that came into my head was um, how can, obviously one of the things we would want to work towards is financial sustainability and like uh, what would the theory of change look like if um, we were trying to bring that in and I was wondering whether the theory of change can be circular as opposed to linear. I don't know, just the thought. Yeah please feel free to put theory of change 
in Google and look at the images page. Um, and you will see I've just come up with one set of ones because I had a certain conception of who might turn up. Um, I realize and my learning is I should have gone for more at the social enterprise end of things and less at the voluntary and voluntary sector end of things. Um, but um, um, yeah, you'll grow. You'll grow to to need those bigger visions and all the rest of it. <clears throat> John, are you there, John? I am indeed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a test, wasn't it? It was. Um, I. What was that? I struggled a bit with the inputs because I wasn't sure. Like I was struggling to know how granular to go. Um, you know, like money, people, places, or you know how how, how to build on those. So I struggled. I was fine with the. Basically, I went for we're developing community associations around our community buildings at the moment. So I was just sort of thinking through that one as an idea. Um, I found the indicators of progress, like I just kept on going, you know, there were just loads of possibilities with that. One. So weirdly, I found that one really strangely easy. But again, with the activities and the outputs, it took me a while to find out how to separate them because activities are outputs and right. I was sort of um, I was just sort of struggling to know where to pitch all of the things likewise with the short term I sort of followed your example from before you know with the six columns um, the short term and the long term outcomes I was sort of fine with the long term outcomes I, I knew what the broader impact would be but then trying to take that step back in the journey to see what the immediate outputs would be um, I struggled a bit a bit so it's good. It was a really good thought exercise, it's, though. It's a good head massage, you know. This is like yeah. theories of change take ages to get right, but yeah. you know what they're for, how to do them. Um, you can't say you don't know what they are anymore. Yeah. You are now TO, TOC experts. <laughs> in in the sense of it's it's less daunting, hopefully, you know. Um, Rosina, how did you get on? Hi, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. There's people talking on the other side of the office, so I wasn't sure. Um, so, yeah, I think for me, um, origin initially it took me a while to even just get it started because I, I was just staring at the columns for a while. And it took me a while to decide which sort of idea or project to put into it. Um, sorry, I'm just the headphones on. Yes, now we can hear people. Yeah. yeah. They've started to get more animated when they're talking. Yeah. Well, something happens after 7.30 to people. 7.31 now, so. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, can people hear me? Yes. Okay. Clearer, actually, yeah. Great. Amazing. Um, so, I think... I think so. I decided to choose um, something that's based on a research project I'm doing as a black and green ambassador that I hope will um, transfer into a long term thing. Um, and to just very quickly summarize it, um, I'm looking at relationships that people have, um, people in the black and brown community have with nature, and wanting to tell those stories through in a multi sense multimedia way and I guess multi-sensory and it's in, by default and sort of the aims I've already were very clear in my head so I thought that was quite easy um like kind of the, the long-term goals and the short-term goals like the long-term goals being well the short-term goals being like creating an co-created enjoyable spaces for people to exchange knowledge and um sort of make small changes maybe in their lifestyle and sort of celebrate and things like that together but then like the long term was like may potentially creating access access routes into engaging with your environment by seeing other like increasing representation and decolonizing the way we look at nature and sort of 
um, inspiring. Easy, goes easy and what was wrong. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, so I was going into the easy bits. So that I kind of already knew, but like I've not really thought deeply about how I would transfer something that's just a research project into an actual tangible body of things. And I was thinking, what activities should I do? And I, I, distinguishing between inputs and activities was a bit hard because I was like thinking, okay, I want like I'd want to sort of sort of create some sort of online platform or app or something because I want it to be like an online thing but also something that's real where people do meet up and there's regular sessions going on uh, for, for like workshops and discussions um, but I was thinking so creating building or creating or designing a, a platform is that is the is that an input or an activity I don't know <laughs> that'll be an activity okay um, and um, I guess sort of yeah, and um, and like just thinking about the people, the, the collaborations. I think you mentioned with the feedback to Clara about how yeah. I think connections with venues and connections with community groups, because I'd like to do intergenerational stuff, like work with elders, like bring their knowledge, like help facilitate them leading workshops with the young people. So like thinking about okay, where, how can I get the people first and then but yeah and in terms of kind of outcome no uh, in terms of like the indicators of pro progress I think I'm, I share the same thing that people have said about how um it's quite difficult to quantify it and I, and, and I'm thinking what is realistic so I just put something in that is not even based on any research at all about how what's realistic but I thought or oh, maybe have a hundred people attend workshops and gatherings in two months or something. So I liked your hundred, your, your attachment to the number hundred. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then maybe 20 people posting and sharing something like right. in now two that's, months. That's interesting. Cause it's like, quite specific. Yeah, sort of engage, yeah. Showing that there is engagement in these sort of more also online kind of spaces and maybe looking at likes and stuff and engagement in, on Instagram posts, mm -hmm. I don't know. But yeah, yeah that's the only way I could sort of think Thank about you. quantifying. Good. I think it's triggered off a lot of thoughts for everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, and you're sort of scratching the surface. And because you're applying it, even when you work for a bigger organisation, you are making it personal somehow from all your feedback. Yeah. And I'm feeling that and I'm um, good with that. Um, I just want to um, just take you to where I've sort of promised you I'm going to take you. Um, uh, there you are, yes. Cool. Cool. Say hi. Uh, you know, when we're talking about these outcomes and things, is, you know, let's say we're picking on the environmental zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are <laughs> bigger bigger outcomes to do with the impact in the environment. Um, you know, it's an, it's an involved space, isn't it? Um, and so these are some of the um, systems out there that are putting together outcomes. Um, and, you know, there's some interesting people orientated ones. They call it non-material benefits that result from our uh, interaction with the natural environment you know these are the spaces within which you know human beings live it's not all just solar panels and the soil and stuff like that even though we need all those things as well um, so that might be food for thought uh, in terms of if you're running an economic project uh, about jobs or supporting other people to make progress if you're that sort of coach um, um there's those sorts of outcomes and people might have heard of the sustainable development goals which in bristol is a big big thing um and a lot of people have said that these are actually easier to understand and really helpful so they might be worth following up with this was an interesting tool um about assessment uh that i just thought i would throw in there so that people can track in terms of their impact. Um, there's a outcome framework by an organization called Big Society Capital, where, you know, if you're working in 
housing and essential needs. You could have a look at how they measure. So of course, those these sorts of organisations influence what funders have as the their chosen outcomes. Uh, and you might see how your work connects to these if they're relevant. Uh, that might make the whole funding journey a little bit easier. Um, and so just last uh, bits of advice is you might draft your theory of change. And if you are going for funding um, and talking to institutions, uh, it might be good to share your theory of change with them, you know, and do that with confidence when you feel that you've built up the whole picture. Um, and you know, it's about not overclaiming or saying you're going to really achieve too much, um, particularly, and it's got to be proportionate to the amount of money that you're you're going for. Um, um, don't overcomplicate it. Um, yeah, and this was just final things about your next steps. It is the whole point of this is about the clarity uh, and demonstrating the journey. And you might step back from this whole thing and say, let me look at what this means for our vision of what we thought we were going to do. How are we going to articulate that? Can we write a narrative, just text, that explains what our theory of change is doing? Um, and if, if some of you are creative and really artistic, you might want to do your own diagrammatic way of communicating this. And I think it was Clara that said, what about circles, not, you know, this linear process absolutely you know the more creativity the better as long as it's clear sometimes people overdo it with cartoons and stuff and it gets confusing but if it helps communicate clearly all the better um, um i think that's everything i wanted to say um apart from i mentioned that there's a lot of resources out there um and so i'm going to give you all the um, you know, links to do with that. And you can have a look at uh, pulling your own, you know, your own take on it. Um, it's all flexible, this stuff, you know. It's not about rigidity. It's about using these tools for your own ends to get to where you want to go. Um, that's what I wanted to say. And that's that's my closing thing. I have to stop now because I promised I'll stop at 7.40. And I've gone to the absolute limit, which I didn't mean to do, but I hope you found it, found useful. it useful. I think that was great. Thank you. Good. Good. With uh, Sibs and Derek. When well, I you get some great direction on how to do that. And, um, and why it's so important to be able to communicate your vision, your journey, the, you know, to break it down to something that's actually a tangible output so that you can actually, you know, when looking at that journey, decide whether they, they can invest in it or engage with it. Um, and I think it's a great, it's a great tool for also finding areas of collaboration, you know, and being able to link with other organisations who may share your similar same or similar pathways to, to, to deliver any output, but you have a certain sort of unique take on it or ability to kind of deliver an element of that or even a whole of that. So thank you, sir. And thank you everybody who's come along and attended. Um, from our perspective, this is one of the series of workshops. The next one is uh, being run by Bobby on marketing. Yeah. And we have Funders coming in over the next uh, over the other workshops and really kind of really drilling down into that process and, and how they kind of uh, engage in practical applications to hopefully obtain some funding to fund those resources and activities to enable you to kind of take their ideas forward and yeah. uh, and take them on to doing the great things that we. Uh, we all want to, want to happen in our community. Either. So, thank you so much, everybody. And uh, thank you, Sarah. And uh, lovely to meet you all. Really. All I don't think I've had as attentive an audience as late into the evening as you lot on Theory of Change. I think you've topped it there. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm impressed. You've got staying power. And again, we'll be sending out, you know, little diagnostic if anybody wants to try and uh, a more of an in-depth dive into, uh, if anybody wants to <laughs> in-depth dive into, uh, into kind of their own business ideas and business plans, then please feel free to engage with us and, uh, and you know, kind of talk through some, some of those ideas or but if you have a specific need to kind of, you know, have a sounding board or uh, uh, individuals who can hopefully kind of tap you into the networks that are available to support you if you can. Okay, so uh, all the best, everyone, and uh, good evening. Thanks, Anna. Uh, and uh, Derek for organising as well. Well done.